Hi everybody, Jason Snell here in Six Colors World Headquarters, and I want to show you CarPlay. So I've got a Pioneer in-car unit that is not in a car, and I've got my iPhone 6 hooked up to it, and I'm going to take you around and show you what's going on in CarPlay. So here we are at the home screen. On the left side, what you'll see is the current time, the network status, I've got three bars, I'm on Wi-Fi, and a home button right on the touchscreen display. And then there are icons. These icons are stock with the iPhone plus third-party apps that are approved by Apple to be CarPlay apps can also be added here. So I've got now playing phone, music, maps, messages, and on the second screen you'll see podcasts. Those are the stock Apple apps. And then I've got two apps, iHeartRadio and Overcast, that are available because they've been approved by Apple for car use. And then the app radio icon is actually a link that Pioneer puts on its own systems so that you can flip over into Pioneer's features from out of CarPlay. Go to the phone. I'm going to be able to dial. It's got a voice interface like... Uh, With whom would you like to Siri. speak? Lauren Snell. Which phone number for Lawrence now? Mobile or and home? And it's prompt me. Home. Sorry, Jason. I didn't get that. Which phone number for Lawrence now? Mobile or home? Cancel out of that. So you can get from the phone interface, you can use your voice, or you can navigate directly, show recents, show contacts, show a dialing keypad. The whole thing is available through this touch interface. The music app works pretty much like you'd expect. It's got a now playing screen. You can see I've got Radiohead here. I've got large repeat and shuffle buttons as well as a create button. What create does is will tick you off into Genius or iTunes Radio. And if I back out of here, what you'll see is playlists, artists, iTunes Radio, pretty much what you'd expect on the music app on your iPhone, except in a slightly different look. The Maps app does what you want. It uses the GPS on your iPhone. Even if your head unit like this one from Pioneer has its own GPS receiver so that it can do its own GPS functionality, uh, the, the CarPlay doesn't use that. CarPlay is displaying a version of the Maps app that is right from your uh, iPhone. And again, the controls are what you'd expect. 3D, map toggle, zoom in, zoom out. And then from destinations, it will search through your mail and your recents, and you'll be able to pick a location You can choose from alternate destinations. And when you're all said and done, you can start navigation. And again, starting route to 65 East Yale Loop. You're going to hear exactly on Meadow what Drive. you're expecting to hear from the Maps app from Apple. And no, Google Maps doesn't seem to be supported on CarPlay yet. Hmm. Let's look at the Messages app. Again, it wants you Who to use Who would you like to text? To Send a message to Dan Morin. Okay, what do you want to say to Dan Morin? Hey Dan, comma, this is Jason, period. I wonder if Siri knows how to spell CarPlay. Your message to Dan Morin says, Dan, this is Jason. I wonder if Siri knows how to spell CarPlay. Ready to send it? Send it. I'll send your message. I have to admit, one of the things that surprises me about this feature is that it doesn't support the uh, iOS 8 audio messages, which would be a lot easier than having to read things back and forth to Siri. But that's not how it works. Let's take a look at the podcast app. This is Apple stock podcast app. works pretty much exactly as you'd expect. You pick an episode. You're listening to the Total Party Kill. And it, and it plays. That's my voice. I feel like the third-party apps are not as good as Apple's apps. I think that's not surprising. I think developers have had a hard time with it. Here's what Overcast looks like. Obviously, all these third-party apps are shoehorned into this very simple menu structure. And that's what they have to use. 
I only have one Overcast playlist. Let's see what's in there. You can see I, I can pick one of these and it's going to jump into that episode. Random PC peripheral hardware market to, for your stuff to work properly is, is not a good place to be. Yeah. Episode of Apple. Okay, so here's something that's interesting that just happened. Overcast just quit. Um, like I said, I feel like these third-party apps are struggling. They're just not as solid on CarPlay as Apple's built-in apps, which is not surprising. I suspect that Apple is limiting what they're able to do, and there may be special things that the Apple apps are doing. I just launched iHeartRadio, and you can see it has nothing. <laughs> There's just no menu. I've gotten the menu earlier, but other times I get nothing. So third-party CarPlay apps seem to be very definitely a work in progress. CarPlay does support the Ahoy Telephone feature. So if you've got that turned on, and I haven't said it yet because I don't want to activate it, but this is what I mean by that. Hey Siri, play artist U2. Looking for U2. Playing U2 shopping. This is song Charles Manson stole from the Beatles. We're still in the back. Okay, so I spent a few hundred dollars on an aftermarket CarPlay module uh, that I didn't even put in my car because I wanted to see what it was like. I want to fo follow CarPlay over time. And because this way you don't have to, to see how it works. Um, would I buy one of these today? I got to say no. I don't see how this is that much more convenient. And in some cases, it's a lot less convenient than just using my existing Bluetooth stereo to remote control my paired iPhone to listen to podcasts or music. Oh, Dan sent me a message. The big promise of CarPlay is that your iPhone can project lots of great information onto the screen, but right now it's pretty dull. I understand drivers shouldn't be distracted, but even the heads-up display, something like the Maps app, is what I expect more apps to be like. And maybe in the spring, Major League Baseball has said they're doing a CarPlay-compatible app. I'll be able to tune in uh, Major League Baseball games, and it'll have some basic information about the game I'm uh, listening to and what the score is. That could be kind of cool. But right now, the third-party apps just aren't very good. I think they're not getting the support that they need. It's just really early for this stuff. So what can I say? I wouldn't buy CarPlay now. I'd wait and see. Hopefully this software will get better over time. But for now, I'm going to stick with my really basic Sony uh, Bluetooth stereo that I installed in my car a couple of years ago.